वेलकम अगेन टू द मुख प्रोग्राम टुडे उल डिसकस थ्री अक्सिडाइजिंग एजेंट फार्स्ट वन इज सेरिक एमोनियम नाइट्रेट हुई इज कल्ड कैन देन डी डी किऊ एंड लास्ट इज सेलेनियम डाइक्साइड ए सीओ टू सो सेरिक एमोनियम नाइट्रेट इज कमार्शियी एवेलेबल एंड दिस इज ऑरेंज रेड कलर यूज एज वन इलेक्ट्रन अक्सिडेंट एंड ऑल्सो लुइस एसिड कैटालिस्ट एमंग द लैंथनइट कमप्लेक्सेस एडभान्टेज अफ सेरिक एमोनियम नाइट्रेट इज इट इज लो टक्सिसिटी इट इज इनएक्सपेन्सिव इट इज सलुबल इन मेनी अर्गानिक सलभेंट्स एंड अल्सो इन व्टार इट इज अल्सो एयर स्टेबल एंड सेरियम एक्जिस्ट इन टू स्टेबल एडजस्ट एंड अक्सिडेशन स्टेट प्लस थ्री एंड प्लस फोर सो इफ यू सी द स्ट्राक्चर अफ सेरिक एमोनियम नाइट्रेट so 3 6 nitrate is bringing minus 6 and 2 ammonia is bringing plus 2 so cerium is here plus 4 so what happens it on reduction it can go to plus 3 another oxidation state after oxidizing electronic configuration of cerium in ground state is xenon 4f1 5d1 6s2 so cerium Ammonium nitrate has been used in many oxidation reaction. Mainly, first we will discuss oxidation of secondary alcohols. So here you can see the secondary alcohol is selectively oxidized to the carbonyl compound with catalytic amount of ceric ammonium nitrate and another stoichiometric oxidant, sodium bromate. So if you see the bromate structure. so this is sodium bromate this is used as stoichiometric oxidant with catalytic amount of can and these two chiral center are undisturbed in this oxidation reaction similarly this hydroxy ketone was oxidized to benzyl with ceric ammonium nitrate and uh, sodium bromate one equivalent in acetonitrile water solvent and this is very interesting reaction here one secondary alcohol and one primary alcohol is there and under this condition ceric ammonium nitrate 10 mole percent sodium bromate one equivalent in acetonitrile water only secondary alcohol is getting oxidized so when there is a primary alcohol then simple primary alcohol may not be oxidized with can and we will see now which kind of primary alcohols can be oxidized with can so primary benzylic and allylic alcohols which are more reactive that can be oxidized with ceric ammonium nitrate and here one example is benzyl alcohol with ceric ammonium nitrate 10 mole percent and tempo 10 mole percent with acetonitrile solvent it gives 92 percent yield of benzyl diide again this alcohol this is dihydroindanol this uh, under oxidation with can and tempo 10 mole percent each in acetonitrile gives this ketone in 94 percent yield and this is an example of allylic alcohol and these two whatever we discuss these are benzylic alcohol so allylic alcohol also can be oxidized with ceric ammonium nitrate and tempo each 10 mole percent in acetonitrile solvent it gives 94 percent yield of the product and now we'll discuss the mechanism of oxidation of secondary alcohols using tempo and ceric ammonium nitrate so this is the tempo this tetra methyl piperidin in oxide there is a, a radical this one and this is also single electron oxidant and ceric four to ceric three this is also single electron oxidant so what happens tempo first goes to the in oxide it gets one electron oxidation by cerium and cerium four becomes cerium three and this species this actually oxidize the secondary alcohol to the ketone and when cerium 4 becomes cerium 3 it again reoxidizes to cerium 4 by oxygen so this this reaction you have to do under oxygen atmosphere and then oxygen will get reduced to the water so this is the whole catalytic system this is bi catalytic system that tempo also is 
uh, is getting cyclized in this reaction and cerium 4 also getting cyclized in this reaction. So, tempo is getting oxidized by cerium and cerium 3 is getting oxidized by oxygen. Another important reaction that ceric ammonium nitrate performs is oxidation of thioethers to sulfoxides and this thioether with ceric ammonium nitrate and here again you have to use sodium bromate 1 equivalent you get the sulfoxide in 99 percent yield. Both aromatic system and thioether this also can be oxidized with ceric ammonium nitrate sodium bromate 1 equivalent in acetonite and water it gives 96 percent yield of this sulfoxide. Also, both alkyl group is there, sulfur this also oxidize, one allyl and methyl group is there under ceric ammonium 10 mole percent sodium bromate 1 equivalent and acetonite water it gives 70 percent yield of the sulfoxide product. Oxidation of epoxides and aziridines, ceric ammonium nitrate also perform this reaction. Here you can see this epoxide is there, styrene epoxide and it in 0.1 equivalent of ceric ammonium nitrate and 1 equivalent of N bromosuccinamide. So, this is N bromosuccinamide, 1 equivalent in acetonite and water, it gives this uh, 2 hydroxy acetophenone. The alcohol is on the primary and carbonyl is the secondary, uh, this is the ketone. And here also this uh, aziridine, n tocyl aziridine can be ring open and followed by oxidation with ceric ammonium nitrate NBS in acetonite and water it gives this amino ketone in 90 percent yield. Also a cyclohexyl containing aziridine can be also opened under this condition and gives this amino ketone with cyclohexyl group in 88 percent yield. So, what is the mechanism of this reaction and this most likely mechanism that can first hydrolyze the substrate. So, when water is there and ceric ammonium nitrate also is a Lewis acid cerium 4. So, it will bind to the it will coordinate with the epoxide here also uh, aziridine also will coordinate with the uh, cerium plus 4 and then water will attack and will give the water alcohol and that alcohol will get oxidized with NBS to give the corresponding keto products. So, this uh, intermediate, this reaction intermediate can be considered a diol. And we have already seen that this diol secondary alcohol will be selectively oxidized with this ceric ammonium nitrate. Here also this, here here may be this product, this intermediate will be first form, water attacks from this center here and you get this intermediate and then after oxidation in bromosuccinamide you get this amino ketone. Oxidation of alkyl benzenes and active methylene compounds, under certain condition this um, ceric ammonium nitrate also oxidized alkyl benzenes like here ethyl benzene is there ceric ammonium nitrate 5 mole percent potassium bromate 0.5 equivalent and dioxin water you get acetophenone 90 percent yield. Also when 2 methyl group is there isopropyl benzene can also under this condition because there are two methyl groups is there and selectively only the tertiary alcohol is formed in 90 percent yield under this condition ceric ammonium nitrate 5 mole percent potassium bromate 0.5 equivalent in dioxygen water. And diethyl malonate here also this proton is quite acidic and under this condition it has been found ceric ammonium nitrate 10 mole percent oxygen 5 liter per minute acetic acid acetonitrate solvent it can give this keto ester product. So, what will be the mechanism of this reaction? So, we can think that uh, first a single electron oxida oxidation will happen. So, you get first a radical 
and again because this is single electron oxidant again it becomes uh, formation of a carbocation when this carbocation under this condition will give alcohol and when one of the r is hydrogen then it will be benzyl alcohol and benzyl alcohol we know that under seric ammonium condition you get the ketone so it can further oxidize to this when one r is equal to hydrogen so if this is a secondary alcohol then you get the ketone now we will discuss ddq this is full name is 23 dichloro 56 dicyano 14 benzoquinone so one side two chlorine group is there and another side two nitrile or cyano group is present so it is called 2 3 1 2 3 Four, five, six, two, three dichloro, five, six dicyano, one, four para benzoquinone or benzoquinone. This is also commercially available. DDQ is very reactive and used under anhydrous condition. So unlike ceric ammonium nitrate, ceric ammonium nitrate is water soluble and you can do even reaction in water, acetonitrate water. We have seen, but in DDQ you have to use. Under anhydrous condition, because it decomposes in the presence of water, DDQ possesses most modest toxicity and the potential for HCN liberation upon exposure to H2. So it may be modest toxicity because it can liberate HCN. The reaction is carried out in inert solvents such as benzene, tetrahydrofuran, and dioxin. used as reagent for oxidative couplings and cyclization reaction and dehydrogenation of hydroaromatic compounds and carbonyl compounds so hydroaromatic compounds to aromatic compounds and carbonyl to alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl that we will see in details so this compound was first uh, reported uh, in 1906 thile and gunther first reported a six step preparation it can be synthesized from the reaction of benzoquinone with hcn hcl followed by oxidation so this is the first step that hcn adds in ethanol h plus condition you get two cyano group from the same side and you get this hydroquinone then after oxidation it becomes quinone again and this is hcl actually so hcl adds here cl minus if cl minus adds here and then after aromatization you get this hydroquinone and again oxidation to quinone and then again another cl will come hcl so again it will react like this and then after aromatization you get this hydroquinone and oxidation again you get the quinone so this is ddq so two cyano group in one side and two chloro is one side and keto groups are in the para position each other so one for para benzoquinone this application it is uh, applied in many reaction one of them is aromatization If you have a de-aromatic compound, then you can put DDQ. It will aromatize. Dehydrogenation of hydrocarbon. Sometimes hydrocarbon has been dehydrogenated to get a double bond. Formation of conjugated double bond. That we will see alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound. You can generate also a double bond conjugated with aromatic system. You can generate benzylic oxidation. You can we will discuss the benzylic CH can be oxidized to ketone. <clears throat> oxidative cyclization reaction also is well known and direct cause dehydrogenative coupling that is cdc cross 
cross dehydrogenative coupling between benzyl ethers and simple ketones also other nucleophiles and direct cross dehydrogenative coupling with tetrahydro isoquinoline. So, this reactions we will discuss what is the general mechanism how DDQ operates in the re reaction. So, this is generally two step mechanism containing an initial rate determining transfer of hydride ion followed by a rapid proton transfer leading to hydroquinone formation. So, this is the main reaction that happens actually that H minus first react also electron also can react first here because this is a electrophilic compound this is parabenzoquinone. So, this electrophilic compound and then H minus first react here you get this system O minus is there this hydroquinone there is a O minus and now this O minus is reacting to the H plus and then you get this motif and ultimately one H plus and H minus first H minus and then H plus reacted with the DDQ to get this hydroquinone or DDQ H this we we can call sometimes DDQ H hydrogenated DDQ. First, we will discuss aromatization reaction, and this uh, is tetrahydronephthalene. Tetrahydronephthalene, if you put DDQ, you generate two double bonds and it get aromatized under benzene reflux condition. Also, if you have this system, this will also aromatize, there will be generate a double bond and then this compound we can generate under similar condition, benzene reflux. Here, if you put two methylated, one, one dimethylated tetrahydronephthalene, under DDQ benzene reflux condition you get this 1 to dimethyl. So, 1 to migration of methyl group is observed along with the aromatization. The mechanism we will discuss and here if you alpha beta unsaturated ketone is there then also the aromatization this group liberates because the aromatization is a very facile process. So, this group liberates under uh, DDQ dioxygen condition and you get this phenol motif. So, this is very interesting. So, one A will happen here double bond and then in it will be pushing so that this will leave and you get the aromatization this is called equilin. Now, we will discuss how this reaction operates. So, as we told that one H minus will first react. So, one H minus because this is benzylic. So, benzylic carbocation is stable. So, H is quite acidic. So, H minus H minus will uh, react and there will be carbocation formation will be there. So, carbocation formation will be there and H minus can react either here or here whatever it will give the same product and if it reacts here and then after tautomerization you get this compound O minus and H here. So, O minus is generated and now this O minus will react with one hydrogen here because this is carbocation. So, this will like we have seen the olefin formation. So, this H plus will be taken by the O minus and you get this compound now neutral compound hydroquinone and this compound is formed. So, a double bond has generated. Now, again one H minus will react because this will be allylic carbocation that is also quite stable. So, H minus will come again to this compound DDQ and again it will react either here or here it will generate again a O minus here. And now, this compound this carbocation after this carbocation if you see this is allylic, but this is a secondary carbocation. And we know that if there is a possibility of a carbocation rearrangement, if the carbocation wants to get stabilized like from primary to secondary, secondary to tertiary that process is very facile and that is what happening here. Here after 1 to methyl migration, 1 to methyl migration the carbocation goes to here and this carbocation you can see this is a tertiary carbocation. Tertiary carbocation as well as benzylic. 
tertiary carbocation as well as benzylic. So, this is quite stable. So, this carbocation is stable. So, this one to methyl mycosin is very facile. You get this carbocation and then this O minus will take up this H plus and you get the olefin ultimately you get the aromatic compound and your dihydroquinone um, becomes this sorry DDQ becomes this dihydroquinone. Similarly, DDQ performs dehydrogenation of hydrocarbons like this chromon system here two methyl groups are there. So, it cannot aromatize. So, only one single double bond is formed when DDQ and benzene 80 degree centigrade we do the reaction. Also cycloheptatriene system and we know that this is not aromatic, but if you generate a carbocation and this is very quickly possible if you treat with DDQ HCl4 acetic acid this you get a carbocation and this is aromatic because this is planar planar 6 pi electron system. So, this is aromatic and so this process is very facile. Also, if you have a system like this, then also um, under this condition DDQ sodium nitrate condition you can get the double bond here and this is also at room temperature you can do this reaction. DDQ also forms conjugated double bond, this is very usual reaction of DDQ and if you have a possible of conjugation then it is very facile like if you have system like this um, diphenyl and intermediate is this that is the hydrostilbene actually dihydrostilbene and then you get the stilbene. So, DDQ generates the stilbene and this is very interesting that if you have a trans steroid so, these are steroid compound, this we will see the mechanism later also. In a trans system you get dehydrogenation from this side and in a cis system you get dehydrogenation from the uh, this side. So, this is the geometry of steroid decides regio selectivity of unsaturation or regio selectivity of DDQ oxidation. So, it is the geometry of the steroid if it is trans then this side and cis this side and also if there is already one unsaturation here then it does not go this side in fact it goes to the this side. So, linearly conjugated system this is linearly conjugated. Instead of cross conjugated system. So, in this case, a linearly conjugated system is generated compared to the cross conjugated system. Formation of conjugated double bonds. So, this is its mechanism that we told the three keto steroids are highly dependent on initial steroid geometry. So, when it is trans then it has been found that this this uh, enolate will form and after this enolate after this enolate then you get uh, this uh, uh, hydride hydride elimination for this hydrogen and you get after elimination of ddqh you get this double one alpha beta answer carbonyl system and in cis system now this enolate is formed and after that you get oxidation of this one. So, you get this carbon and when trans case you get this carbon. So, this will be the accessibility which hydride and H plus is accessible. So, that depending because here this H minus will react with DDQ and here this also will react with DDQ. So, this is very important that accessibility of the hydride ion to DDQ and that is why the facial selectivity operates here. Benzylic oxidation DDQ also has been found to do benzylic oxidation like this system in acetone 20 degree centigrade you get 93 percent yield this is azulene system you get the carbonyl here 
and it has been used also benzylic deprotection like here simple benzyl group is there, but here activated 3, 4 dimethoxy system is there and when DDQ in dichloromethane aqueous dichloromethane was treated with this substrate you get deprotection you get this allylic alcohol. So, this benzyl group still remains. So, this is very important this group is more electron rich. So, it has a chance to re more react with the DDQ. Oxidative cyclization DDQ also used in oxidative cyclization reaction. If you see this compound there is a benzhydrolic carbon here and with DDQ condition you get the cyclization. So, what is happening this is a, a carbocation that is what we told earlier with ceric ammonium nitrate here also you get a carbocation, carbocation and this this is reacting with the carboxylic acid maybe the anion of the carboxylic acid and you get this compound because this is 6 member ring formation. So, this is quite facile. When you have a olefin here and then also the 5 member ring will form. So, most likely this goes via this carbocation. So, this electron reacts with DDQ and then generate a carbocation here and then it is reacting and then after dehydrogenation because DDQ also do the dehydrogenation and then you get this uh, aromatic system. And this compound it has been found that when it cyclizes then the double bond isomerized, double bond isomerized and you get this 6 member ring. So, here also first this carbocation will form first this carbocation will form and then then it will go to this compound and then uh, as we have seen that DDQ uh, dehydrogenate. So, this product this product or intermediate will be converted to this product. So, the cyclization will happen because this electron cloud will react to DDQ to generate a carbocation and then uh, cyclization and then again dehydrogenation will give this compound. Direct cost dehydrogenative coupling between benzyl ethers and simple ketones, uh, benzyl this is benzyl ethers and ketones it can give this reaction. So, alpha position of ketone because the inner light formation happens and then it reacts to the oxonium ion. So, detailed mechanism we will see and this condition is DDQ 100 degree centigrade. Suppose if you do this reaction chromon and 2 butanone, 2 butanone in 3 equivalent and DDQ this is anhydrous condition 100 degree centigrade nitrogen atmosphere 2.5 hours isolated at 50 percent you get a mixture of product. So, ketone two positions are there this is primary this is secondary here it has been found the secondary that product is more in 1.5 and this is 1 ratio. But main thing is that CC bond formation happens. So, this that is why this is called also cross dehydrogenative coupling. Other nucleophiles can also be used in this reaction to the chromat and like dimethyl malonate can be reacted with coman. You have to use a other Lewis acid along with DDQ in room temperature you get 77 percent yield of this product. So, here also you get a oxonium ion and then this uh, negative charge of dimethyl malonate this react here and you get this product. Here also this is activated nucleophile nitro esters and this nitro ester 
nitro ester under this condition indium chloride copper triflate uh, which acts as Lewis acid and DDQ you get this products in DR is say 2.5 is to 1. Not only benzylic ethers, allyl ethers also can be reacted under this condition. So, DDQ you have to use lithium chloride here, DDQ lithium chloride and dichromethanic solvent you can get the carbocation first then the oxonium. So, this is the oxonium ion and then a nucleophile can be reacted. As you can see this is the allylic ethers, this is the formation of carbocation here and this hydride will be taken by DDQ and DDQ uh, then the oxonium ion will generate and you get a reaction with TMS cyanide you get 82 percent yield. Similarly, enol ether OTMS silyl enol ether can react to give this ketone. Similarly, allyl nucleophile, allyl tin nucleophile can be reacted with this allyl ether to get this product in 79 percent yield. Similarly, if there is a branch also the reaction is possible. So, the branching does not affect the oxygen ion formation and you get 94 percent yield. Also, if this is a OTBS not only methyl this is all methyl here OT base this is also possible. So, the silyl does not affect the oxonium ion formation here and you get the oxonium and then cyanide. However, the yield it gets reduced. So, methyl ether are better choices compared to the silyl ethers. Direct cause dehydrogenotic coupling between benzyl ethers and simple ketones. So, this is the mechanism that benzylic ether, this oxygen, uh, there is a lone pair, and we can think that first one electron goes from the oxygen uh, lone pair to this uh, DDQ, and you get a radical here because if you see this structure. And the electron, if it comes here, then single electron, then then a radical will form here, O radical, and O minus here. So this will radical. And what happens now? Again, this H dot will go to this O dot, and it will give the O H. And because there are two radical, now this bond will form, so oxonium ion will form. And you get the anion. Now, this is goes to OH and this you get CN, CN, uh, uh, CL, CL. And this O minus then reacts with the ketone. So, this O minus reacts with the ketone to generate the enolate. And this already is oxonium ion. So, what happened? DDQ activating both electrophile and nucleophile, both partner this as well as the uh, carbonyl compound this both activated by DDQ. So, this enolate is forming where this is the base now and after deprotonation it becomes the hydroquinone system and now this is a oxonium ion this is a enolate. So, this reaction will take place desired reaction and you get the CC bond formation. Activation of tetrahydroisoquinoline not only uh, chromane, but uh, quinoline system also isoquinoline system can also be reacted under DDQ. So, DDQ nitromethane solvent room temperature if you have the N phenyl system you can get reaction with nitromethane. So, CC bond formation here also mechanism most likely aluminium ion is formed. So, first one electron then uh, another electron oxidation and then you can get the aluminium ion. And it has been seen, uh, it has been observed this that the aluminum ion is forming actually that also can be observed by changing the 
uh, vary changing the R group. Suppose when hydrogen is there 95 percent, methoxy 95 percent, 80 percent, and when R is equal to NO2, then you get 58 percent. So, if there is a electron withdrawing group, then the aluminium ion is destabilized. And this is a chiral version with ceric ammonium nitrate and with chiral ligand and palladium catalyst. So, this is the phosphine ligand and palladium triflate is there and under this condition with Bach anhydride and dimethyl diisopropyl mannonate is acting as a nucleophile and you get this product. Here the Bach group is required otherwise this reaction will be reversible. So, if you put the Bach anhydride under this condition Bach protection is happening and you get this product in 86 percent enantiomeric excess. So, this is very important that ceric ammonium nitrate can generate the aluminum ion and then the chiral catalyst will do the facial selectivity. So, that the one phase is blocked of the aluminum ion and you can get the addition from a selective one phase to get a chiral or enantiomerically enriched product. Now, we will discuss another oxidizing agent which is selenium dioxide. So, this is selenium dioxide selenium is 4. We know that oxygen sulfur selenium it is in the that series. So, it is colorless crystalline solid. It is soluble in solvents like dioxygen, ethanol, acetic acid and acetic anhydride. It is extremely poisonous and should be carefully handled uh, while working with it. It is very selective oxidant. It exists as one dimensional polymeric chain with alternating selenium and oxygen atoms. Compounds of selenium are very poisonous and smelly. So, you have to handle carefully. Selenium dioxide one major application is the allylic oxidation. Like this allylic system there are three allylic carbon is there this methyl, this methyl and this CH2 group and if you put selenium dioxide in ethanol you get selectively this methyl is going to the CH2OH group. So, this is very important. So, the group which is getting oxidized which is trans to this group. So, what means it means that it is sterically more accessible. So, the methyl group which is more sterically accessible is getting oxidized to the OH. This methyl is getting oxidized to the allylic alcohol and here also you can see this is geranyl acetate, selenium dioxide here it is catalytic amount and tartaric butyl hydroperoxide it is the stoichiometric amount in dichloromethane solvent. There are th many allylic carbon this, this, this this, this, this. So, selectively only one allylic carbon is getting oxidized with selenium dioxide that is the this methyl group which is also trans to this, this is trans to each other that means sterically which is more accessible that is sterically less hindered that carbon atom will get oxidized. And here you can see only one allylic carbon is there so that is why tertiary alcohol is generated here. So, when there is no other opportunity only one carbon is allylic the, that case only one product will form. So, you get this tertiary alcohol under selenium dioxide catalytic amount and tertiary butyl hydroperoxide stoichiometric amount. Here cyclohexene is used and cyclohexenol is formed you can see 0.1 mole of selenium dioxide and tertiary butyl hydroperoxide. This is the mechanism of this allylic oxidation. So, what happens this uh, allylic CH that is what this CH which is more accessible. More accessible this reacts with this oxygen here and now this double bond is migrate. So, this is in kind of reaction and you get reaction here and this hydrogen is this hydrogen. 
So, this hydrogen is going to here with the oxygen and you get selenium carbon bond here and which is not very stable. So, that is why again 2, 3 sigma topic rearrangement is happen. So, this is allylic selenic acid less stable. Now, again oxygen is reacting here and you get this carbon silicon bond breakage and you get this compound. And this compound if you hydrolyze what will happen? This bond will break and you get ACOH, ACOH. So, this becomes 2. So, selenium 4 becomes 2 and you get the allylic alcohol. So, 2 times rearrangement of the double bond keeps the double bond in the same place. First in the in reaction and 2, 3 sigma topic rearrangement. Oxidation of carbonyl compounds which is relay oxidation also called. SeO2 oxidizes active methylene or methyl group present adjacent to the carbonyl group to give one to dicarbonyl compound. This is also very popular reaction of selenium dioxide. As you can see here acetone with selenium dioxide efflux condition gives this ketoaldehyde and this is an intermediate for hemijaran B. Mehita group did this reaction and selectively this carbon is getting because this is the alpha to the carbonyl under this condition selenium dioxide acetic acid catalyst H2O dioxide reflux you get this 1 to keto system which is an intermediate for hemijaran B synthesis. Also acetophenone can be reacted with this selenium dioxide ethanol you get the ketoaldehyde that is the alpha to the carbonyl going to the carbonyl group. And here uh, there is no carbonyl group only the H is there, but this is unreacted only under this condition this allylic goes to the first alkyl and then, then it goes to the aldehyde. So, what is the possible mechanism for this reaction? So, here also this hydrogen will react this hydrogen is acidic and this will react to the oxygen, it will go to the oxygen to make a OH and this selenium will make a bond here with the carbonyl group. So, you get this in reaction, this is also in reaction that selenium reacts with the carbonyl and hydrogen goes to the oxygen and you get a oxygen silicon bond again 2, 3 sigma topic rearrangement, 2, 3 sigma topic rearrangement generate this one this oxygen now react here and you get uh, O silicon bond breakage. So, this bond is breakage to make another O silicon bond. So, earlier what, what we have seen that this kind of system if you give the water or the water present in the solvent hydrolyzes this bond. But in this case what is found that this proton this is quite acidic because this is alpha 2 carbonyl. So, this is quite acidic enough. This is quite acidic enough to get eliminate and you generate this carbonyl here and this oxygen silicon bond breaks like this. So, you get a carbonyl group here, carbonyl group is generated. Not only earlier what we have seen the allylic alcohol generation only this bond breaks, but here this hydrogen is acidic enough so that rearrangement happens that the carbonyl is generated and you get H2 and selenium instead of ACOH here selenium 0 is formed. So, allylic oxidation we have seen ACOH whole 2 is forming, but here selenium 0 is forming. Selenium dioxide also has been used to oxidation of alkynes like this compound is converted to benzyl in selenium dioxide H2SO4 also phenyl acetylene is converted. when selenium dioxide is to support to the sketo carboxylic acid benzylic oxidation can also be performed with selenium dioxide uh, only you need very high temperature so 200 to 210 degree centigrade under this condition you can oxidize the benzylic group we have seen that in uh, ddq condition even in can also but here uh, selenium dioxide can also oxidize benzylic 
carbon to a keto group. So, here benzophenone is forming and here uh, this methyl group uh, is getting oxidized to the aldehyde group with selenium dioxide condition. So, another uh, reagent that has been used uh, which is phenyl selenium bromide this is preparation of alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compounds. So, if you have a ketone then with a base and phenyl selenium bromide you get the alpha functionalization of alpha selenium compound and then with H2O2 you get the alpha beta unsaturation here. So, this reaction also is popular and it has been used in many natural product synthesis. Here is one of the complex molecule with a carbonyl compound and when it was treated with phenyl selenium chloride you get this um, carbon selenium bond and this uh, when treated with H2O2 it becomes alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl. So, we will discuss the mechanism here as you can see first base generates at enolate then enolate reacts with phenyl selenium bromide to get this alpha selenium ketone and then oxidation happens of selenium to get the selenium oxide here and then the elimination happens of the carbon selenium bond breaks and under this condition you get the olefin and what byproduct is ACOHPH. So, this is the byproduct of this reaction. So, today we have discussed three oxidizing reagents first one was the sedic ammonium nitrate we have seen sedic ammonium nitrate oxidize secondary alcohol compared to primary alcohols it also open aziridine oxidative reaction that amino ketone you can get also epoxide also it open and you can get the keto alcohol also benzylic carbon also can be oxidized and with ddq ddq mainly does the unsaturation we have seen it helps in aromatization alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound also cross dehydrogenative coupling also it has been used it has been used uh, to activate kuman also tetrahydro isoquinone also we have seen that uh, oxidative cyclization reaction also it has done and you can get if a phenolic oxygen is there then it can do the uh, cyclization and now selenium dioxide very popular for activating allylic methyl group and the methyl group which is more accessible less sterically crowded generally trans to a carbon atom that methyl group selectively oxidize with selenium dioxide to alcohol. And when a carbonyl compound is there then also selenium dioxide this is special of selenium dioxide it can give one to dicarbonyl compound. Thank you.